this is Teresa Jackson with a tutorial today about Photoshop's gradient tool. To get to the gradient tool, you use the G on your keyboard. That takes us to the gradient tool here, and you'll notice in the options bar at the top that we have some new options, including a gradient. This gradient goes from black to white because it's picking up the colors in the color chips here from foreground to background. If I go over here to my color panel and select, say, a red or an orange color, you'll see that the gradient changes from orange as the foreground color and white as the background color. If I click on the background chip here and pick a different color and say OK, now we have a nice uh, gradient from uh, orange to a red color. The little caret or downward facing arrow next to the gradient will pull up a set of default gradients that come shipped with Photoshop. The first one is always going to be your foreground to background color, and the second one will always be your foreground to transparency. So the rest remain exactly the same regardless of what your foreground and background color are. Just these first two will change depending on what that color is. Let's switch out of here, pick a different color, and click on this again and you'll see now we have blue to red and we have blue to transparency. Clicking directly on the gradient brings up the gradient editor. I'm going to go through this in more detail here in a moment. For right now, I'm going to cancel out of this. This first button here next to the gradient is for a linear gradient, and the next one is a radial gradient. There's three other options here as well. For this tutorial, I'm going to focus on these first two. The gradient tool essentially paints a gradient on whichever layer you have selected. You click and then drag out to the direction that you want that gradient. So by clicking in the upper left to the lower right, I have an angled gradient that goes from the foreground blue to the background red. Now notice what happened is, is that it covered the photo image that I had because I only have a single layer and that layer was selected, the gradient painted over the image. So I'm going to do a command or a control Z to undo that. The best thing to do if you want to add a gradient in this pixel form is to create a brand new empty layer by clicking the layer page icon. Now I have a new layer one that has no contents, complete transparency. This time I'll click in the upper right, drag down to the lower left, and we have a gradient that goes in the opposite direction and it's on its own layer, so under that layer we still have the photographic image. Now this is a pixel layer, just like a photographic image would be, or a scan, or anything like that. I could run filters on this layer, I could paint on it, but to demonstrate that it's just pixels, I'm going to use the smudge tool here and smudge this around. So basically I'm pushing the blue into the red and the red into the blue. There's another way to create a gradient, which is actually the way I prefer, and that's with an adjustment layer. I'm going to demonstrate how to edit a gradient using the adjustment layer method because it will edit in real time. It's a lot easier to follow what's going on. I'm going to delete this new layer I created by just dragging it down here to the trash can and now we'll see how the gradient adjustment layer works. Adjustment layers are found under the center icon that's half black, half white. The second option is gradient and that brings up this gradient fill dialog. If we click on this caret here, we'll see the same default um, gradients that we saw from the gradient tool. Let's pick this first one again and, and take a look at the blue to the red. Now when we're using the adjustment layer, the angle of that gradient is controlled here in this panel. Um, if I change this angle here, we'll get something more similar to the one that I dragged out. I'll go ahead and say OK with this. Now the difference here is that this is an adjustment layer, it's not pixels. So I'm on the smudge um, tool still, and we have the the symbol that says no, I can't smudge this around because there are no pixels. It also comes with a layer mask already applied to it, so you could easily mask this gradient by painting on the mask. If we switch to the mask, and I switch these colors around so I'm painting with black, and I go to my brush tool, and I just paint through the center of it, I've basically masked out the gradient and we can see through to the photo below. 
I'm going to do a Command or Control Z to undo that mask and click back on the gradient. Right now the mask is selected. I want to select the gradient and you'll notice that the color chips return back to blue and red. If I double click here on the gradient, it brings up the gradient fill dialog again. We have the same options that we had with the gradient tool. Under here we have the default gradients. And let's just take a little uh, deeper look into this. These are the gradients that come shipped. But if you click here where this gear icon is, there's tons more default gradients that you could load into here. Let's pick this one that says pastels. And we have an option to say OK, which will replace these gradients, or append, which will add to the end. So I'll pick append. So now we have these pretty pastel color gradients added to the default. When we click on this again, you'll see those. So take a look in here. There's all kinds of options. You can check out what's in there. Now, if we click on the gradient itself, it brings up the gradient editor. This is the exact same gradient editor that I pulled up when I was using the gradient tool. Let's take a look at how this works. We can pick a gradient from this section up here and we can edit the gradient down here. Right now, we have a blue color that's going to a red color. If I pick a different gradient up here, we'll see that this changes blue to red to yellow. Let's switch back to the blue to red. So the chips on the bottom are the colors. So this is blue. If I select by clicking right on that blue, this color chip shows up. And clicking on that color chip brings up the color picker. So I can change the color. And now we're going from green to red, or from green in the lower right to the red color in the upper left. And this is one of the reasons why I really like using the adjustment layer is that this edit happens in real time as we change these colors. Let's pick on the red color here, which then fills this color chip with the red. Click on that, brings up the color picker, pick a different color, say OK, and instantly we have um, a new gradient color from green to blue. The chips on top of this gradient bar here control the opacity of the color. So both of these are black, so that's 100% of the color. If I click on this one here, and you'll see that now we have an opacity option. I'm going to take that opacity all the way to 0. Let's move this out of the way. And we'll see that our gradient fill is now going from a solid green to an opacity of nothing or transparency. So the blue color essentially disappeared. Let's just move this back here and take this opacity, say, halfway up. So now we have um, a completely opaque green at 100% opaque to 47% of the blue, which is allowing us to see some of the photo below. I'll go ahead and say OK. And let's change this the other direction. And now we have the green in the upper left, and we're going to a transparent blue in the lower right, which is allowing us to see through to the photo below. I'm going to click back here on the gradient to bring up the gradient editor. Let's take this opacity back up to 100%. So we have a gradient going from green to blue. Now we can add colors in here. We see some of the defaults have multiple colors. We can add colors by just clicking anywhere on the bottom. And that added this foreground color of dark blue. So we're going from green to dark blue to light blue. Again, if I click on this blue chip here, it brings up the color editor. And we can change that to a different color. So now we're going from green to orange to blue. These diamonds that are in the center here are where the blend, the midway point of the blend. So if I click right on this diamond, it's saying that the blend happens at 50% between the two colors. If I move this to the left, I'm going to get a lot more orange and a lot less green because the blend is happening at 70, 17%. And you'll see in the gradient, let's move this out of the way, the gradient here that the green has a much quicker blend from the green to the orange. As I take this um, diamond over even further, I can get a, basically almost a hard edge on that gradient because it's very quickly switching from green to orange. If I move this back this direction, 
you'll see that we now have a lot more green and a lot less orange. So if I wanted to find the midpoint of this section from orange to blue, I need to select one of these colors. I'll select the blue color and now the diamond shows up between these two and I can move the location of this as well. If I like this gradient, I can add it to my presets by clicking the New button. I'm going to say OK and go back to the Gradient Fill dialog. And here where it says Style Linear, let's switch to Radial and see how that changes the uh, gradient here. We're now going from the center out to the edges. And we can reverse that direction. So right now we're going green to light blue. If I click Reverse, it'll go from light blue, light blue to green. So it's applying the same gradient. It's just applying it across the image from the center out instead of from directionally from one end to the other. I'll leave the style on radial and go back to the default presets. And let's go back to the uh, default of black to white. So now we have a gradient fill with um, black edges down to white in the center. We can scale this up or down. If we go way up, we basically blow the blacks off the edge. If we take it down, we'll see a tiny little white in the center. So we can adjust the way that radial fits in there with the scale. Let's go back to the gradient editor and click on the opacity of the white. I'm going to tap on that which brings up the opacity slider and take that down to 0%. So essentially what I've done is I've created a dark vignette around this photo. Now I can change the color of this black to maybe something that matches the image better. Let's click on the black chip and that brings up the color and, bring, and click on that to bring up the color picker. Notice that we have in eyedropper as we hover over the image. So I can sample some blue color from that photo here, say OK, and now my gradient, my radial gradient matches the color of the image below. If we take a close look at this, we can see that that blue color it kind of doesn't fade all the way to complete transparency. There's a little bit of a blue tint over the image. I want to open this up so it's completely transparent and I can see the photo below. So I'm going to click on the gradient again, bring up the gradient editor. Now if I click on this top chip here, this is the opacity, I'm going to drag that to the left way over to the left. And what I've done now is this is completely transparent because the blue goes from 100% here to transparent at this point instead of all the way down on this end. So now we can see the true color of the photo below. Now that I've done this, I'm not really happy with that blue color. I want to make the blue color match the sky. So again, I'll click on the color chip, pick on color to bring up the color picker, and then sample the sky back here and say OK. And you'll see we have a nice blend from the gradient. Let's say OK so we can see this really well. So the gradient is the same color as the sky on the top here. Let's turn this on and off and you can see what we've created. So have some fun playing with the gradient tool. I recommend that you use the gradient tool as an adjustment layer because it gives you real-time flexibility to play and see what you come up with.